Greetings. This is August 17th. There is a lot of cloud, smoke, and haze blanketing the province, and not a lot of infrared showed up in the overnight scans. Uh, a check of the Modus Terra system revealed no infrared spots at 12.30 a.m. over the province. There was a few in uh, Saskatchewan, uh, Alberta had one in the northwest portion of the province, and there was uh, about a dozen or so uh, scattered across northern Washington, Idaho, and Montana. But in the province of BC, nothing. We had to wait until the NOAA 20 update that uh, happened in the wee hours of the morning, and then we began to see some infrared around Nachaco. There were a few clusters around the Flat Lake area, down at the west side of Kelowna, Manning Park, and around Osuya. So we'll zoom in. This is the Cutoff Creek fire just to the right of center on the screen that is moving eastward from the top of the Nechaco Reservoir. We can see the Chief Lewis Lake fire over on the left hand side. If we move over the Rockies to the eastern side of the province we can see the Ridgeview fire. And that appears to be taking on that burn pattern from southwest to northeast on the prevailing winds. We're moving down to the Caribou. This is the Flat Lake Fire Zone. And we can see there's a cluster to the east of Moose Valley. There's also another cluster that is to the west of Gustafson Lake. Zooming into the northern flank, most of that activity is directly north of Long Lake and Deer Lake, just to the east of Beaver Lodge Lakes. And if we move to the western flank, we see a cluster of about four hotspots. That's about eight kilometers west of Gustafson Lake. We're now rolling further south. This is around the Manning Park area, Highway 3, the Crow's Nest. Uh, Princeton is to the north off screen. The highway runs along the bottom of the screen and then it goes up the right hand side. There was infrared activity closer to the highway in yesterday's update. We're not seeing that today, but there is likely still activity there. Uh, you'll want to go to Drive BC. The link is in the description below and find out where any road closures are and any travel restrictions in the area. We're now moving over to Oliver Osuyas and uh, the fire that's east. Uh, we can see those clusters just to the right of center on the screen approaching Mount Baldy. There's uh, three in a line that may be a control strategy. Zooming in, we can see those three hotspots just to the left of center running at a diagonal. And there are two more hotspots appearing east of what appears to be a Forest Service road. The hotspot appearing furthest east, about center of the screen, is approximately three kilometers from the base of the hill at Mount Baldy and uh, approximately four to five kilometers from the top of the hill. Moving further north, we're now seeing infrared that did not appear yesterday. This is southwest of the west side of Kelowna, right at the Okanagan Connector and north of Peachland on Mount Law. Zooming in, we can see it's in a large forested block directly southwest of Glen Rosa. These are 375 meter VIIRS indications. They do not mean that that square is being consumed by fire. They just mean that heat was detected somewhere within that square. They are in a fairly random concentration of clusters. If we turn on the drop down menu for the NOAA system and select time since detection, we can see that those hotspots are under six hours old. And these screens were captured at approximately 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, we're turning on the radiative scan now. This is showing where most of that heat is being generated. The darker blue colors mean cooler, the lighter or brighter colors mean hotter, and most of the heat is being generated in the center of these clusters. Let's go to Windy now. It's coming from the northwest at 11 kilometers an hour right up to the lakeshore. 
if we go to the forecast, winds are going to be reaching 20 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 47 kilometers an hour, mostly from the north and northwest. Then overnight, it'll slow down a little bit and winds should shift tomorrow and start coming from the east. Windy has a menu on the right hand side and if you click that you can get the drop down and then select webcams. It's connected into the Drive BC camera network. We're looking from West Kelowna south along Highway 97 and just around that mountain corner that's where the fire is. So this may be a good camera to uh, check in periodically. I did see they had a delay that popped up with that red bar. The camera was offline for a period. I don't know if that's related to any sort of power issues in the area. But it's definitely a handy resource to have both of these systems combined on one screen, looking at the wind, the cams, and uh, then it's just a hop over to the NASA firm system and you've got the infrared. So again, we're not seeing a lot of infrared. Fortunately, we caught some data off the NOAA system. We'll be waiting for more updates as those satellites pass overhead. Uh, there is fire in these fire zones, so be very careful and check the ground reports at BC Wildfire because you'll want to have an up-to-date situation report if you're local to any of these areas. Thank you very much for watching and I'll keep checking the infrared. Be safe out there and keep your nose to the breeze.